you. Coming to you from Modal Music Studio in Warrington, Virginia. Modal Music Studio, rap, rap radio. <laughs> no, but seriously, in all seriousness, we want to talk today, tonight, whatever time you're watching this show, about Noble Gases, the new album from Los and Win, available on all streaming platforms, so you don't have to pay for it, but you should because you want to support the band. <laughs> yes, you can buy it on Bandcamp. Nobody does, no. but you could. <laughs> Have you had any buyers on Bandcamp? No. <laughs> you could be the first one, right? Do they have any incentive to buy it on Bandcamp other than to support well, they keep, starving they, musicians? They keep the data file. Like okay. the, you get to keep it go. and you can use it on any device anywhere you want. Burn a CD if yeah. you still have a CD player. Um, I still have a CD player. I drive an older car. <laughs> yeah, my car doesn't have a CD player. <laughs> yeah. You get the Bluetooth. Anyways. Noble Gases. So, this is the second album from Los and Win. Tell me about the process, about your process. You're the lead singer. You're not normally a lead singer, are you? No. <laughs> For good reason. <laughs> What's the good reason? I was terrible at it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we might have talked about this a little bit. If you're a fan of Rappahannock Radio, you would have heard the first interview with Los and Win on the classic Rappahannock radio with the audio. But what is it about um, comedy that makes you feel comfortable being a lead singer when in the past you refuse to take on that role? <laughs> <laughs> it makes more sense. Like, I'm a goofy, like, generally kind of funny guy. I'm always the one cracking a joke. So that persona just makes sense, whether I'm actually – talking because I have parts in songs where I talk or I, I go on a rant um, or I scream or yell something but also with the singing it carries into that where I just feel like it's natural like um, if I'm singing something funny it just it all makes sense like if I'm when I'm singing a serious song it just doesn't quite seem to there's like a disconnect between who I am as a person and the serious nature of whatever the song might be like if it's a song about a heartbreak or, or something like that it's just like it's like, oh, no one's ever dated this guy. What is he singing about? Uh <laughs> Girl, your body's like a triple shot espresso. My heart sizzles just like bacon, yeah. When you squeeze those oranges, it really gets my juices flowing. The sight of you cracking my eggs, it sends a shiver down my spine, yeah When you rub that honeydew across your lips, ooh I can barely, can barely contain myself Maybe we should slow things down a bit While I make us some pancakes, mm, gluten-free But as I pour the batter on the griddle I notice something's feeling Sausages frying in the pan. When the toaster pops, so do I. Oh no, I made myself sexually attracted to breakfast. All the same, you went though, didn't think I'd be so affected. And now I'm embarrassed every time we go to the IHOP. I'm dreaming of threesomes, 
with snap, crackle and pop. Oh no, I'm in myself, sexually attracted to breakfast. When I see French toast, I get harder than a fence post. And if you hand me a Krispy Kreme donut, oh, I've got a cream all over it, yeah. Got arrested at Denny's for rubbing butter on my nipples. Now I'm trying to explain to the judge just how I got myself in this predicament. When my lawyer wills in a tray of pastries and of their beauty he extols. And everyone in the jury loses their minds. They've all gone crazy. As I start to fuck the cinnamon rolls. Oh no, I made myself sexually attracted to breakfast. All this innuendo, didn't think I'd be so affected. And now I'm embarrassed every time we go to the IHOP. I'm trimming the threesomes with snap, crackle, and pop. Oh no. I made myself sexually attracted to breakfast When I see French toast, I get harder than a fence post And if you hand me a Krispy Kreme donut, oh I'm gonna cream all over it, yeah Oh no, I made myself sexually attracted to breakfast I can't go to buffet lines anymore Oh no Sexually attracted to breakfast. Oh, no. Christmas morning is gonna be really awkward now. Oh no, I made myself sexually attracted to breakfast. Oh, no. How the fuck does this even happen? At least for me. And that's all that matters. <laughs> uh, I actually got the idea for that. I was driving to see my chiropractor uh, early one Saturday morning, and uh, Prince has a song called Breakfast Can Wait. And I heard that on the radio, and he's singing in his song, he's singing about, he's like, oh, we don't need to make breakfast. Let's go have sex instead. And uh, Good choice. <laughs> uh, uh, my brain, as twisted as it is, was like, oh, well, what happens if I combine the two and uh, accidentally made myself attracted to breakfast foods? And that was what started. I started, uh, the, I, by the time I got to my uh, chiropractor, I had the whole first course Oh, wow. In my head of, oh no, I've made myself sexually attracted to breakfast. All this innuendo, I didn't think I'd be so affected. Like I had all of that just like already written out. E even the part about the threesome with Snap, Crackle, and Pop. Like all that. <laughs> um, I had all that. And I, I, but I just had to then go home and then like grab my guitar and come up with the, the chords and the melody. Um, and kind of put all that together. Because um, that, like, uh, like for example, that song is kind of like a tale of three different sections. Because I have a verse section which sets up everything, then I have a chorus section. And then once you get to the chorus, you never return to the verse. And then I have a bridge where like another, it just advances the story, but and that's completely different musically. Actually, I don't even sing in that. And then it returns to the chorus again. Um, and so once I've written the song, then um, I introduce it to the band at practice. If it's funny, then we agree to play it and we just spend time working on it and getting, um, sometimes it comes together really quickly. And sometimes that one in particular, we had to really work on finding the right tempo for it because because of the different sections, it needed to kind of um, find a way to kind of gel together and find the different groove for everything. It was a little bit challenging. Um, and like another song like Hugs was a little bit the opposite. So I got the inspiration talking to a friend. Um, it was during COVID and we missed physical contact. So um, we were talking about how we just missed hugging people. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay. What if I just used hug as a euphemism for fuck and wrote a song basically like about that and just replaced the word fuck with hug and uh, wrote that one really fast.
I'm totally into no strings attached hugging You can come over, hug me and leave You don't have to hang around and talk Oops, I'm so sorry that I forgot I had a rather large eggplant in my pocket I guess that's why you finished your hug first You can hug me from the front You can hug me from behind You can hug me on the street Or even in my car's back seat You can hug me as many times as you want You don't even have to buy me breakfast And you can hug all of my friends too Jerk. Could I hug you and your sister at the same time? You can laugh when you hug me Don't worry when I cry You can tell me my hugs make you feel All gooey inside Aww. For whatever reason, I like to write songs as a band, as one of my bands making a recording. So I wrote Hugs like right after we released the first EP. Um, okay. And uh, I have a new one that uh, we may or may not be showing later. So stick around <laughs> for potentially hearing a song or being disappointed. Is this Flush the Turd? <laughs> it is Flush the Turd, but... They may not hear it because we haven't decided yet if our take of it was good enough. So it might be a surprise. It Ooh. might not be a surprise. But either way, it's going to be released sometime. So yes, definitely follow Lowsome Win on Instagram at Lowsome Win. Go check out their Spotify. Check out their YouTube, which this will also be airing on, not only on Rappahannock Radio, but on YouTube. So you're probably already on there. <laughs> but how much of the... So you mentioned continuing the process of writing these songs with the band do you like to have other people's involvement with your songs yeah you want other people's input i mean yeah uh i thrive in songwriting partnerships i feel like that's where uh i'm kind of I, I like having someone to bounce ideas off of uh, which has been tricky because i'm the only one who writes the comedy songs so I don't really have a songwriting partner in this, but what I'll do is I'll take it to the band and they'll tell me if something's good enough or not. And sometimes they just say, hey, change that line, and I come back with something, and I keep coming back until it, it's right. 
Um, have they actually said something is not good enough? Like that's oh, yeah. terrible. And yeah. how did you react? Well, I had an idea for a song. Actually, uh, uh, two two examples. I had an idea for a song about a hoodie and how I uh, was in a relationship that ended badly and she kept my hoodie and I didn't care about the relationship, I just wanted my hoodie back. And so I had written this song about how she's out like spilling pizza and beer on my hoodie and hooking up with other guys <laughs> while wearing my hoodie and how I had to like finagle my way to, to like get back with her just so I could get my hoodie back. And Brian was the only one who thought it was any good and the rest of the guys were like, no. No. So you guys are a democracy in that way? If only one person thinks that it's good, then... Yeah, everybody's got to think the song okay. is good. Um, All right. So it has to have 100% approval for songs to fly. Have you always operated that way in bands, or is this just with Lowsome? Oh, well, that's how we're doing things in Lowsome when okay. um, other bands have operated differently. Um, but even though I function as the band leader, I still, you know, we're not going to... The rule is no one's forced to do anything, so... Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. As with, uh, <laughs> you want it to be consensual. That's right. <laughs> Always ask. Lost and win yeah. is dirty, but they're consensual. So, yeah. How does that come across to your audience? Like your songs? I mean, do people, I mean, I'm sure you've had a wide range of responses. And actually, we were talking a little bit off the camera about the fact that Lost and win has actually never been paid for a gig. <laughs> Well, it's we can't get like a, a like a traditional gig at like a bar, winery, brewery. Those things are kind of harder to get because we don't have a three-hour set first of all, and the average patron at a place like that does not want to hear our material like that for three hours. And plus, some of those places do allow kids, like restaurants and stuff, that have right, bars, right. and it's not not kid-friendly, um, not well, safe for work either, unless your boss is cool. Um, but it's uh yeah so we've done like we've obviously played a lot of open mics I've gone even by myself but we've done some uh like we played the North Carolina Comedy Festival last year and we're playing it again this year uh it's September or, well we're the weekend of the September third and fourth and the festival continues the rest of the week after that I highly recommend you go down there lots of awesome comedians and you see us on the weekend um but that's really fun but yeah we're not getting paid for that but that's just awesome that we're even invited to go and play and to be invited back after last year which went yeah, really well but like absolutely we're so different because we don't fit really in either world we don't really fit in the music world because we because of our material and we don't really fit in the comedy world because they generally have one microphone in a really tiny stage <laughs> um so you don't find a lot of comedy bands out there i mean it um, there's Tenacious D, Flight of the Concords, right. Garfunkel and Oates, Weird Al. And those have come like few and, and far between. Like they're pretty spaced out. It's, it's not like. Not yeah. a lot. In fact, I would love to find some more. Um, if you are playing in a comedy band, let me know. Reach out. Or if you're just later. doing comedy music. <laughs> yeah, reach out. In a creepy way. <laughs> don't touch my butt. Uh, but so, yeah, so we, I have found some other comedy musicians, but I want to find more and maybe organize more comedy music shows what is the ideal venue for los and win then the 9 30 club <laughs> i mean i did have you, like have you like called them have you contacted have you got no i there? have not okay. reached out to them but like uh, venues like that where it's like it's a show not it's not just casual people in a bar but like it, people are there to listen to a band and listen right, to music right because we've we have done some of those shows like unfortunately one of our favorite spots epicure cafe has now been sold or whatever they decided to, to retire um, but we had a lot of uh, shows there and a lot we had like three but like they were they were all really good they were, we had, they were a lot like of fun a lot of shows. well considering we haven't had a lot on um, how many over shows, the past how many shows have you guys had I don't even know um, because uh, we had a long time with COVID where we couldn't play any shows and the first things coming back were outdoor gigs at breweries and wineries and that's not us so right. we haven't had too many. We've played at Fat Tuesdays in Fairfax as the featured artist during their open mic a couple times. We played at Epicure Cafe. I think it was three times, maybe four. Um, we played North Carolina Comedy Festival. I did a show, uh, Rock Bottom Brewery in Bethesda. Um, there's a, a comedy show that I've done, uh, that I did there. And actually, I'm going to play again coming up soon. So I'll be posting more details. I don't know when you're listening to this, so... Go to loathsomewind.com for more details about that. Uh, but yeah, And so we're, we're trying to find some other ways to play, but I think we have to create our own. Yeah. 
have you thought about doing some sort of um like i don't know if people if it would go over well it depends on how strong your stomach is right like some sort of dinner show type of thing where mm. i mean you could have like a couple different you know opening acts like at comedians like actual stand-up comedians and then you guys be obviously the headliner the final act well, are we and qualified be like, to be the headliner? well if you're creating it then hell yeah you're qualified are people to gonna it. stick it's, around it's your show I would hope, right? I mean, I, that would be part of... Well, I mean, if they spend money, and I think they will, and if, you know... Yeah, uh, I would love to... Actually, I tried with a, a friend of mine who um, does comedy, and she was organizing a comedy open mic that we actually per, you know performed at uh, right before COVID. Um, I would love to organize uh, comedy shows, um, or at least to kind of find a way but uh i would that's why i want to find other comedy musicians and have like a night of comedy music because i could probably get that at a lot of like venues like oh this is a, a show it's a whole right. bunch of comedy bands it's right. advertised as a comedy show and then people are prepared for it's not like yeah, they're just not walking just into a bar water. and <laughs> like so i i actually opened up for low some win one time because you guys um let's see that was in early 2020 we we didn't even know if that show was going to happen because lockdown might it was like lockdown came the next like Monday. Right. This was early Tuesday, March. It was. it was right after my birthday, but and so I think lockdown happened like March fifteenth of twenty twenty, something like that. Yeah. yeah. And so this was like a couple days before that. The toilet paper thing had already happened. I think I even made some kind of joke about it to try and like get people out. Like, hey, you know, I know you're feeling really sad. You're out of toilet paper, but like, you know, every it hadn't really like hit quite yet so like i kind of feel bad a little bit making a joke about it but whatever but yes i opened up for you guys at soul mountain cafe um sally may foster was there and but so that was just you know it's a it's a restaurant it's a bar there are kids walking around and i remember you were so self-conscious because you were like I'm, I'm ready to do this song you know we're ready to get up and play but like i'm kind of waiting for the kids to <laughs> Yeah. to leave you know that's sort of awkward and and you're a respectful guy i mean you're you're true to your art form but you're also like a real human being that you know you don't want to offend somebody and put a parent in a <laughs> weird scenario there's things we sing about that maybe kids <laughs> shouldn't know about just yet um but yeah so uh i was worried about that and of course uh they had a kid had to, uh, so we started our set and like i had this one joke where i tell and i say the word dick and uh, I just right the kid just happens to be walking right by, and I'm like, "Don't suck my dick." <laughs> and the kid's like right there, and just like, ah. Did the parent look at you? Did oh look yeah. At you? I mean, it was later on in a bar scene. It's in a bar. Which, they should have known. But I mean, still... you can hear that kind of crap in a bar, just being in a bar, not even the band yeah. doing it. Um, you know, we probably could get some bar gigs, but I mean, in terms of like audience reaction, which is where the question started. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have played, like, for example, playing it just like Fat Tuesdays. We played at the Warrington one a bunch and the uh, the Fairfax one a bunch. And, yeah, sometimes people love it and sometimes they, they don't. Like, the first time we ever performed uh, was just me and Chris and we were awesome. Like, everybody loved it. It was great. The second time we bombed. We got, like, hmm. one laugh. Wow. And, like, people were, like, walking out. So it was, like... It, <laughs> It's like it's hit or miss. Um, that's why it shows uh, like playing at Epicure or whatever. It goes well because people are there to well generally it goes well because they're there to see a show, and so they they sit there and they listen and sometimes laugh and <laughs> cheer at the end. Although we played one time and there was a band uh, where they were all like teenagers. They were like the first band of the day. I think we went on like right after them maybe or there's, there were there's another band and then us, but they were all still there with their parents. <laughs> And I get up there and, and doing really the low set. Hilarious. One dad was loving every second of it. He was laughing, but the kids were like really nervous because they they didn't want their parents to know that they understood some of the things <laughs> I was talking about. And like the parents were like, we don't want them to know we know what it is either. And it was like this really weird like. <laughs> Everybody gets a little poop on their finger now and then, yeah. You've talked about not having a lot of shows, right? Because of the timing of the formation of the band. When did you guys actually form? So I launched the project in the summer of 2019. So okay. it's been three years going now. Yeah. Do you feel so? I mean, in a in a lot of ways, COVID though. I mean, 
it, it hindered performing arts, but it, it can help in a certain way. I mean, of sort of like uh, cocooning an artist into like focusing really on their project and being forced to do that because you couldn't really go out. Do you feel that way or did you feel like no. you're like, no, I'm ready to go out? Uh, well, I think because we were just starting to hit our stride. So okay. right when it hit, like we had had a several like good performances in a row. We were we had gotten our set up to a good length at that point like we could do like a 45 minute set which is like a good like average length for a set um and it kind of derailed everything yeah we took the t opportunity to make an ep because we could do some of it remotely and stuff um and a couple of us were in a bubble uh, already because brian and i were still roommates at the time so uh and then chris and i started modal music studio so we were together so we had opportunities to make that so we did the best of it but it kind of derailed us for a while and plus so many venues closed right and a yeah. lot of places that put on the kind of shows that we would have been able to be part of because they weren't like regular bars they were yeah. like show shows they no longer and exist. those places are like so many places are gone and so we've now reached a spot where there's less venues to play still a lot of bands that are looking for shows and we're just getting our, our feet back up and going uh We've been, you know, because we were writing new material, we decided to make that the album. And uh, now we're at the phase where we've got the album out. We want to get back out and perform more. So we're getting, doing album awareness. <laughs> and, and then eventually, gigs. More gigs. We hope. <laughs> She's only dating me for my money. Wait till she finds out he don't have any She'll dump me harder than a massive turd Vita Vita Benjamin. I can't. I didn't say it right. <laughs> Vita Vita Benjamin. No, we'd like it's to, good stuff. to uh, thank our sponsors. Model Music Studio is a sponsor. Abracadabra Massage. We have Fountain of Roots CBD. I've got Kimberly Nicole Photography. Green Comfort School of Herbal Medicine and Kat Meyer Energetic Herbalism. And then finally, if you guys love organic food, check out the local farmer's market at Rappahannock. Um, let's see, where is it? It's at Pendruid. <laughs> and that is Gardens of a Commit. So. Kim actually took the photo. She did a photo session for us. The album cover for Noble Gases came from oh. her photo session. Where you guys are jumping up in the air like Yeah, that. so that was a failed jump. Oh, it was. So we used that for the album cover because it's funny because it was like we failed on the timing and we're all like goofy and awkward. Like we some of the, like the good jumping shots are like our promo shots where we're looking cool and sunglasses and stuff. Um, but for the album cover, we're like, let's go super goofy. Like this is where we, we goofed. What kind of response have you had to the new album, to Noble Gases? Have you guys had a good uh, really feedback? Good. Yeah, so far, um, particularly the first track. Um, so that one uh, is a little bit different than other ones. That one, so pretty much how, like I explained before, I write the song, show it to the guys. If it's funny enough, we all finish it up together and go. That track, I came to them with an idea. I didn't have any music written, uh, except I knew what I wanted the first note to be. F sharp. <laughs> but I had this idea for this big acapella piece. Um, I'm not going to spoil it in case you haven't listened to it yet. But uh, particularly um, Chris and, and Brian were really helpful. Like we sat down the three of us together in um, our recording room at Modal. And we just first we fleshed out the first half of the song. Then we fleshed out the second half. And we just uh, built it up from... The lyrics, I had the lyrics set, but it was really just a few words. And they helped me put together um, what all the harmonies were going to be. And then we recorded the whole thing. So it's just um, lots of the three of us, like three part harmony, just over and over yeah. again. So how many like, tracks do you have on there? I think it was like About. 18 or something like yeah. that. 18 voices, maybe. Yeah, it's a it's a phenomenal track. Like the first <laughs> I told Dan, the first time I sat down to listen to the new album, Obviously, that's the first song on there, or not obviously. You'll find out it's the first song on there. Um, and I cried. <laughs> it sounds silly. And then I laughed my ass off because it's like, the, it, it, you know, I'm not going to. It's It's got a nice finish. <laughs> <laughs> they finish well. Yes, they yeah. do. Um, yeah, it's but really, really pretty. And then it's very pretty. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, and that's, I would say, this album, um, more so than your first album, reminds me, like, obviously. No, I need to stop saying obviously. 
I know and people that know you um, as a musician and as a person know that you're a huge Beatles fan. Mm-hmm. You can hear that influence there. And also you can hear a lot more of the Monty Python influence, which they were heavily you know, involved with the Beatles. And um, so I really like hearing that a lot more and, and hearing your influence there. But obviously it's unique and it's you guys doing it. But yeah, that song, I just, I can get over how, I mean, so I think sometimes there's an idea that comedy bands, just because you're being funny, that you're not like good at what you do musically. I don't know if you've gotten that kind of that attitude That seems to be before. kind of the, the, the trope, I guess. Yeah. You think that has anything to do with some of the booking as well? Like getting gigs or no? Because um, no. people know you guys also. Yeah. So they know um, you're good musicians. Yeah, because that's one of the things we strive for. It's like if you don't like the material in terms of what we're singing, you'll like the musicianship. Because right. uh, sometimes what they run into is uh, comedians trying to play guitar or something like that. Right. Um, and I that sometimes it, doesn't work out. I mean, Adam Sandler does it sometimes. He's not very, he's not bad. No, he's, he's not, not bad at yeah. all. Um, but uh, yeah, you, so you see stuff like that where it's, and then so, because we've always strived to be awesome musically. So yeah. even if you don't like what we're singing about, you can still appreciate our musicianship. Um, in fact, that we actually heard two people discuss that one time. We were performing at Molly's in Warrington, mm-hmm. and we heard, uh, I have to paraphrase here because I don't remember exactly what they said, but one guy turns to the other guy and says, like, I don't like what they're singing about. And the other guy says, yeah, but they're really tight, though. <laughs> so Well, you guys were professional musicians long before you were. I mean, you can yeah. be a comedian anytime. You don't have to be. Do you consider yourself a professional comedian now, actually? <laughs> no, I still struggle with that, actually, viewing myself as a comedian. Why? Because I still have my guitar. And I'm not standing up there with just me and a microphone and a crowd. I still have my I guitar see, with me. That's like a crutch in your mind, that I, the guitar is like a crutch? I just feel like it puts me in a different category because I, f- I, like I feel like I don't belong in a comedy show because I've got a band. And comedy shows aren't equipped to, to have bands. So I feel like I'm still kind of in the music world. I'm trying to do the comedy world because I feel like the material will be more appreciated there. But I feel the nature of what it is that we do, we're still in the music world. We're still kind of musicians. So it's kind of, sometimes I'll say musician and comedian. Okay. But the comedian always comes second. So would you ever consider you just performing with you and your guitar like acoustic guitar or something in a oh, show yeah, yeah i have before you have yeah okay. i've gone and performed solo a lot um after this things... material yeah after yeah a few of the songs on the new album but definitely a lot of the old ones too um starting back in the summer of uh 2021 um i was go- going out to open mics i couldn't get the band to want to go um, so I was, I just started going out and was playing a whole lot of them playing pretty regularly. And yeah, it's not as fun without the other guys there. Yeah. Obviously it sounds better with everybody there because I mean, they're both better singers than I am. So, Hey, and you uh, got all the harmonies and you got all the, the harmonies, you yeah. got the, um, like having, drums work really well for comedy. It does. It's yeah. uh well, plus a lot of the stuff is groove to it. So having the drums there is that having that solid like back, um, Right, because really we talked helpful. about that as well a little bit off camera is that um, what genre Losom Win would be as a band besides just being a comedy band because, I mean, a lot of, you know, that can include so many different genres. And I know you guys are kind of all over the place musically anyways, but you're more, yeah. what would you say? Well, uh, if we do a lot of stuff that's kind of groove-based, I think that's one word. Where if you can apply, it's like folk groove, funk groove rock groove you know you could put that into kind of any genre and that would be us but like look at the new album we have an acapella piece we have uh, a <laughs> funk song we have kind of like a rock bluesy kind of song we have more of a pop kind of song um and we have like another one that's kind of like a funk jam song story time which is me just telling a story the whole time right. over top of a funk but groove. I th- that yeah i think that's what makes it more groove Reggae. and funk is that like if you weren't <laughs> dancing to like <laughs> the lyrics of i was sexually attracted to breakfast it's danceable material like i'm not saying that it, i mean yeah. hopefully people will have you had anybody get up and dance at shows at performances i should no. say no 
We have because they probably feel too like uptight or something about the words. Well, I think but... people like when they're listening. I think they're kind of just mesmerized by one. They're either laughing at what I'm saying or they're amazed that I'm saying what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. How, do you ever do you ever feel embarrassed? When <laughs> no, I don't. I know I'm about to say something crazy. They don't, and I love watching their reactions. Um, one of my favorites. Um, I was playing an open mic just by myself. And after the song, this guy just says out loud, like, dude, you got some balls. And uh, I, I laughed. I was like, that, that's <laughs> hilarious because uh, I, I just finished our song Double Check from our first album, which is a story of me accidentally sending a dick pic to my whole family and all their reactions to it. It's one of my favorite songs. So that just, I mean, I love it musically, and it also gets stuck in your head. It's very catchy. That yeah, it's, that's <laughs> a fun one to sing. Always double check. Yeah, <laughs> and I get to belt out uh, the phrase "she stuck her finger up my butt," <laughs> like just belt it so out. So you don't ever feel embarrassed about doing that. You've never had one moment no. of feeling embarrassment. No, but, I, so you have felt embarrassment as a musician, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, I but have. so, in what? Doing um, what? Uh, well, okay. Uh, this goes back many, many, many years ago. I did a show with a singer from a band of mine, and um, very last minute, we it was a Valentine's gig, and we redid our whole set. We just learned a whole new set. We were not prepared. It just we did not have the rehearsal time, and it was a disaster. I never wanted to get off the stage that much in my life, and uh, it just it was not good. And so you're I was, waiting for like the you suck. It was, I mean, no, we actually, we probably didn't sound that bad, but we definitely did not sound as good as we normally did. And uh, definitely, did, that was I was embarrassed by that one. Um, so so what embarrasses you is the craft, if you are not... If I'm failing at the craft. Yeah, okay. Yeah. If you're not up to snuff, so to speak, yeah, in no, your I'm own not mind, in... which most people, I'm, I'm going to have to honestly say, I don't think most people notice, unless you're a musician and you're like tightly, you know, watching and like really involved, I think... Or, I mean, unless you're really bombing it. I think you, you can get away with a little mistake here and there. People could be like, oh, yeah. they could have been tighter. I don't know. Do you not agree with that? I, I feel like some, so, I feel like I'm paying more attention than anybody else. I yeah. Guess. No, I do agree. Most people do not catch mistakes it, because if you're, you know, if you're competent, you can cover them up anyway or you don't make a mistake in a way that people really <laughs> notice. But I have seen a lot of uh, where people don't like – well, I think this is the difference between professionals and amateurs. Where professionals know how to prepare, and amateurs don't. And so you see, you see this a lot at open mics where people get up and they don't know how to play the song they're trying to play, and <laughs> so, wait, everybody can pick up on, on that. <laughs> wait. <laughs> yeah, um, one it's of the like worst. <laughs> the Tenacious D. Sorry to interrupt you, but in, in the Tenacious D, the original show that aired on HBO Max, right? And there's like they show. always have the signs going into the bar where they played open mic, and one of them that's my favorite is <laughs> open mic. Learn to play music in front of real people. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean that's that, basically what it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, open mics are great um, for people to get experience on stage and to test out material. I use open mics to test out new songs. I'll play them there first before, sometimes even before showing them to the band. Really? Um, yeah, actually, with the case of the newest song, Flush the Turd, I played that at, uh, I never actually intended that was going to be a Lullis and Wind song. I didn't know if it was going to be good enough, but it was a huge hit. I played it uh, four times, or maybe five, um, at open mics. And it was, uh, surprisingly, it's just a smash hit. Like, everyone really related to it. Um, and so I showed the band, I was like, all right, we got to. Because we were recording the album while I, as I finished up that song, we had just started so the album. So it didn't get to make it. So it yeah, didn't make it, the, the cut, and I didn't realize it was a keeper until like a, a month into making the album. So <laughs> you, were, you were ready to flush it until you did Well, it was going to be a single serving, like I was going to try it and, and see how it went. And sometimes you try a song, and if it doesn't really go anywhere, then it, you know, if you get no laughs, you're going to try a different joke. Right. Uh, but it, it went somewhere. So where did you learn the craft of comedy? Uh, British TV, a lot of it. Monty Python, Faulty Towers, Are You Being Served, Keeping Up Appearances, like all these old Brit coms Very that my dry. parents grew up on. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I grew up on all that kind of stuff. And, you know, like my favorite band being the Beatles, they also were pretty funny. And right. they, were, they were funny in interviews. Uh, 
Yeah, they're hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Saturday Night Live, I watched a lot of that. Um, I mean, some of my favorite movies growing up were like Ghostbusters. So, you know, those comedies like that. Uh, the Blues Brothers was one right. of my favorite movies yeah. growing up. And that combines music and, and, and comedy, too. Um, so uh, I kind of learned from those those guys. And then when it comes to music and comedy, Weird Al. Uh, obviously, Monty Python, because they had some music in there, too. But like Weird Al was like a, a big one. I'm a huge Weird Al fan. But I, my favorite stuff that he does is his, his originals. So not like when he's doing a parody of a popular song, not but when, when he's, he's writing his it. own. <laughs> like, I love those songs. And he's... You should go listen to him. He's really good. <laughs> After Forget you... about Lowsome Wind. No, 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 no. <laughs> After you listen to Lowsome Wind, go listen to some Weird Al. This is really a, a show about Weird Al. You guys didn't realize it until, Weird Al pod. you know, 30-some yeah. minutes in. But we're actually huge Weird Al Yankovic fans. And now, welcome to the stage. <laughs> that would be awesome. I know, that would be amazing, yeah. As a surprise guest, maybe one day, maybe one day, he'll he'll find out about Lowsome Wind and Rappahannock Radio. So go subscribe. Yes, please do. And Weird Al will be on the show. <laughs> so what's coming up um, next for Lowsome Wind? What are your plans? What do you What do you want to manifest into the future for <laughs> Lowsome Wind? Uh, more attention on the album because uh, it, it, it's hasn't been out very long so we can just get the word out uh and then get in front of audiences more um we're again we're really excited to get down and play at the north carolina comedy festival and we're gonna look into you know branching out and trying to play some more venues and really just get the material in front of people that's yeah. really the the, the that's game. all you can do yeah, yeah whether really. it's through interviews uh <laughs> or just live in person or just getting more plays on Spotify, getting on the playlist and stuff. Just get the word out. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we're helping to get the word out right now. Everyone watching is helping to get the word out. We're going to be posting all over the place, spamming the hell out of you. With <laughs> you won't be able to eat breakfast without thinking about Dan. Mm. <laughs> Tasty. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you are in luck. Tonight, we have a brand new song from Loathsome Wind. Stay tuned. Here it comes. Right, right now. Don't go anywhere. You might want to turn the volume down, though. It's loud. It's not safe. <laughs> Your boyfriend's a dick cult, a real fucking bridge troll His mom should've used the better form of birth control Your boyfriend's a shitbag, deserves to be bitch slapped How can you ignore the mountain of red flags? Your boyfriend's a skid mark, the size of a car park An addict abusive, his future is so dark Your boyfriend's a dingus, a waste of space doofus He won't even go down to perform conolingus He left you on the floor when you were sick Constantly begs you to suck on his prick He won't even listen to you sing Even though you're a star And he fucking pawned your guitar! Fuck! <sighs> I'm gonna need a minute Your boyfriend's an ass wife, dumb soldiers in July A sleazy weasel creep who cheated and lied Your boyfriend's a butt head, a stain on your bedspread A dried up, crumbling, tasteless piece of cornbread Your boyfriend's a scoundrel, so please are my counsel His love is a sick joke, he wants to control you Nobody likes him, he needs to be exiled He deserves so much better than a loser man child He lost his mind when you put pepper on a sloppy joe Called you dumb, called you a cunt And it's time for him to go Okay, I'll admit I might be a little bit biased Because I want you all to myself I want you all to myself So dump the turd boy and date me instead Flush the turd, 
flush the turd. Flush the turd, flush the turd. Flush the turd, flush the turd. Flush the turd, yeah, flush the turd. Flush the turd, flush the turd. Flush the turd, yeah, flush the turd. I can't do a toilet sound.